On this very special session also, we have the privilege of having with us Ms. Soma Mandalji, who is the Chairperson of the Steel Authority of India Limited and the Chairperson of SCOPE. She has over 35 years of experience in the metal industry and she has spearheaded the implementation of path-breaking marketing strategies at SAIL since 2017. She is also the member of the CII National Committee on Steel and Chairperson of the CII Subcommittee on Safeguard for Tariff and Non-Tariff Barriers. I would like to invite Mr. Atul Sobtiji, Director General Scope, to join us in welcoming Dr. H.K. Chopra and Ms. Soma Mandalji and to open up today's session on 3M COVID protocol. Mr. Atul Sobti. Thanks, Rishali, for setting the context. Once again, good morning to everyone. As Rishali mentioned, since uh, April 2021, this has been a tough period for all of us. We are, thank, we are thankful to the God that we are now seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Long way to go, long way to go. Issues like long COVID, initial third wave, children COVID risk. These are some of the issues which are hovering in our minds. During this period of second wave, as you know, that public sector fraternity, they have again come forward, extended uh, their hands for uh, their infrastructure support, hospitals, as well as providing the oxygen. A lot of work was done. While in the school, And for this purpose, Scope and Fem Health, which is a dedicated channel to the health, as mentioned by Rishali, we have been working very extensively together and partners in many health-related programs. 
over the past uh, a few months we feel that there are two most important things which one needs to arm oneself one is the accurate information and the second is the calmness of mind to follow the safety measures and the protocols but the irony is the information about the pandemic and its protocol are available in in fact abundance not less but in abundance and making us very difficult to differentiate opinion from the accurate information so keeping this in view scope along with ml we conceived this idea and uh, um, uh, we thought of organizing this particular program so that we are able to impart with the correct knowledge and myths can be busted with the facts and today as vishali mentioned did we have the privilege of having amongst us dr hk chopra one of the which whom i consider one of the best knowledge house and expert in the country in the field of covid today he will bring the accurate knowledge on the table and dispel many concerns that all of us may have he will not only guide us on the medicines but also how to follow healthy lifestyle to consciousness and self consciousness his scope is thankful to dr chopra for agreeing to address the webinar today and answer the many doubts that people have towards covid we also have today madam soma mandal chairperson scope and uh, chairman seal who would motivate us all to follow the correct path to recovery our heartfelt thanks to soma ji for gracing today's uh, interaction she would be joining shortly there is some technical issue i understand i request uh, all the participants to please be candid and forthcoming with their questions so that more and more facts can be brought to the table thank you and stay safe over to rishali dr chopra uh, i would like to welcome you to say a few words to the audience before we begin our session today okay Are we waiting for Soma ji? I I think I, can you hear me, please? Yes, yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Can I yeah, do yeah, it? On, the video is not on. Let me speak on audio. If you don't yeah, mind. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, sure, thank sure. you, sure, ma'am. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. A uh, a very good morning to Dr. Chopra, the entire team there, and uh, Mr. Swopti also. Uh, it has been good that uh, spoke along with dr chopra has been able to provide this time to give his uh, views on the various uh, issues of the 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 thought process which all of us are going through regarding the covid the second wave since uh, april 2021 has been extremely challenging time for us all of us the anxiety and the general gloom has been impacting us adversely both physically and mentally in this difficult period the public sector fraternity has been at the forefront in supporting the nation with covid care facilities distribution of essential supplies masks and sanitizers and also being a part of the vaccination drive in fact public sector that each and every public sector is going beyond the normal uh, job and trying to do its best what we can do to the society to the people when the suffering is so much what more we can do to help the nation to fight against this deadly disease many pscs also have taken initiatives uh, like uh, the oil sector the petroleum sector and the steel sector have taken initiatives for liquid medical oxygen others also and uh, as needy partners with the government in the in this crisis in fact sale alone has supplied more than 85000 tons of liquid medical That's oxygen the public sector enterprise has also helped in sustaining the economy through continued production by establishing appropriate covid related protocols for the safety of workforce to ensure minimum risks to the health and livelihood however the surge of information on social media and news has made things difficult for people as differentiating facts from myth has become a challenge 
every day we read some WhatsApp message which keeps us really tensed again. In this situation, interactive sessions on health and mind mindfulness are particularly needed to inform and educate people. SCOPE has been organizing many socially relevant programs for the well-being of the community at large from time to time. I congratulate SCOPE and Farm Health for collaborating to organize this important webinar for pro providing genuine and <clears throat> appropriate feedback to remove con the confusion on myths related to COVID. I was particularly impressed with the topic for the seminar which is about mind, mindfulness, meditation, and medication. Mindfulness is a qual, the quality or state of being conscious or aware. Meditation is to look inward or to involve the spiritual self, while medication applies to the well-being of the physical self. I can summarize that this webinar is about creating awareness to strike a proper balance in the approach to the physical and spiritual aspects of our life, which is greatly influenced by the turmoil in the existing external environment. It's a privilege that Dr. Chopra, a renowned cardiologist with over 35 years of distinguished clinical experience will address us today. I am told that Dr. Chopra has a fellowship from numerous prestigious institutions in UK and USA, has published 584 manuscripts authored a book, A Mind-Body Capsule, has been conferred a long list of national and international awards and headed the Indian Academy of Ecocardiography as well as the Heart, the World Heart Academy and World Wellness Foundation as president. I'm sure that his session will provide valuable inputs to help all of us in making informed decisions for our health and our well-being. I request all the participants to make the most of this opportunity and participate wholeheartedly for a safer and healthier future. I wish you for the very best for a very informative and lively interaction. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Chopra, specifically. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Vrishali, for your kind introduction. It's really a great pleasure and honor indeed for me to be here on the platform of SCOPE and FAM Health on a very special occasion today. And the occasion is very well known to you. It is a 3M COVID protocol today and tomorrow, happening for the first time in the world, where we are integrating mind, fullness, meditation, and medication. At the outset, I express my gratitude and thanks to Madam Soma Mandal, Chairperson of SCOPE and SAIL for our kind words, Mr. Atul Sopti, DG SCOPE for his uh, very nice introduction during the welcome address, Asha Kapoor, who is the MD of FAM Health, Mr. S. A. Khan and his team of SCOPE and the team of FAM Health and all the members of PSUs and all the members of FAM Health and each and every one of you for giving me this opportunity to interact on a very need-based topic. And that is 3M protocol for COVID today and tomorrow. We all know that COVID pandemic is like a global tsunami taking away many lives for the last two years or so. But my appeal to all of you before we really start interaction is, we should try our best not to make this COVID pandemic as a panic pandemic, anxiety pandemic, fear pandemic, chaotic pandemic, or a confusion pandemic. We should learn how to cope with it effectively with calmness, faith, and hope. I firmly believe that by calmness, we can achieve everything in life. There's a very nice Vedic expression 
of Upanishad. It says, in every crisis, there is uncertainty. We do not know what is going to happen. When there is uncertainty, there is no attachment. When there is no attachment, there is freedom. When we have freedom, you surrender yourself to cosmos. When we surrender ourselves to cosmos, the cosmos orchestrates dance into your feet. This is what we call as spontaneous right action. It will happen. We know that the pandemic comes and goes. Spanish flu came and gone. Cholera came and gone. Smallpox came and gone. And even the polio came and gone. This is possible today by understanding 3M mode, 3M protocol for the COVID. By first time, I mean mindfulness and mask for everyone. And second M is meditation with mass calmness. And third M is mass medication by mass vaccination. And some people we need specific medication, which I'll be discussing in next. Uh, uh, 45 minutes or so. I think uh, so much you very nicely expressed the meaning of the word mindfulness. Mindfulness is basically a present moment awareness. Focusing on thoughts or what is happening inside us and what is happening outside us by focusing on various senses. So much he mentioned very nicely that we have to be careful cautious and conscious and focus on all the senses of speaking, listening, seeing, breathing, eating, touching, smelling, thoughts, environment within and environment outside us and yet maintaining the attitude of gratitude. It's a very beautiful expression, so much. Meditation, also, so much he explained very nicely, and I would just like to say that it is a technique by which we can experience silence or calmness, which is the need of the art. Every individual has a silence within. So, when we go to this experience of silence, we can achieve the field of pure potentiality or a field of infinite possibilities. To define it further, we can say, it is the process of taking you from the disturbed level of consciousness to undisturbed level of consciousness. It's just like a sea. On the top of the sea, we see the waves, which are disturbed level of consciousness. And as we go deeper down, this is the undisturbed level of consciousness. Similarly, there are several levels of consciousness, like waking stage, sleeping stage, and dreaming stage. They are the disturbed level of consciousness. While the undisturbed level of consciousness are thuria, what is called soul searching, cosmic consciousness, divine consciousness, and unified consciousness. That is in the whole universe. I think if we understand this, the life is very beautiful. There are various modes of meditation. That's not the agenda today. Like which we practice and we do it. Like primordial sound meditation, transcendental meditation, vipassana meditation, and then transcendental meditation, Tibetan chanting, Gregorian chanting, even chakra meditation. I practiced chakra meditation for the last 30 years, both morning and evening. To have peace within myself. I think we all need to do it. This is a very important need of the day by which we witness the world inside us and outside us and never victimize any issues so that 
we don't have any kind of something. Before we really start the program, I request each and every one of you to keep your eyes closed for a minute or so, and I will just try to recite a Shanti Mantra so that we create some kind of vibrations of calmness within us. And after that, I'll request Vishali to start the interaction on this 3M COVID protocol for interaction with each and every one of you. May I request you, please close your eyes for a minute. And I'll recite the Shanti Mantra. The expressions are like this. One me mansi pratishtita manume vachi pratishtita avya avya moedi Vedasya ma anishta Satam me ma prahasya Aane na dhite na Kodatran samdhami Satam vadishyami Satyam vadishyami Tanmavatu Tad Vaktaram avtu avtu maam avtu vaktaram avtu vaktaraham om shanti 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 Thank you very much for your kind attention. May I request now Vrishali ma'am to start the proceeding of the interaction. Vrishali. Uh, Dr. Chopra, thank you so much. I want to thank you very much. I want to thank you so much. I want to thank you so much. I want to thank you I think it set the tone and the agenda for our discussion today, where we talked about meditation and mindfulness. Also, especially like to uh, thank uh, Soma Mandal, ma'am, who has given such a uh, beautiful introduction uh, to uh, the, the chapter that we are discussing today, as well as for Dr. Chopra and Pam Health. Um, and I would like to tell all our participants, who are watching, please uh, send your questions in the chat box. We have a lot of questions that have come from the first time. And we want to know that because uh, Dr. Chopra is here with us today, हम जितने ज़्यादा सवाल ले पाएं उतना इनका इनका यहाँ होने का फायदा लेंगे हम। डॉक्टर चोपड़ा थैंक यू वंस अगेन एंड गेटिंग इनटू द डिस्कशन। यू ब्यूटीफुली एक्सप्लेन्ड द इंटरियर प्रोसेस ऑफ़ द थ्री एम्स। आई वांट टू नाउ फर्स्ट बिगिन एंड टच अपॉन कोविड प्रोटोकॉल्स जो एक हमारा so do tell us about this a little bit. <clears throat> Thank you, Vishali. I think we all know about uh, COVID by now. Then the COVID was born in Wuhan. And the scenario you just heard from Mr. Atul Sopti, the scenario is almost touched up to 17 crores in the world. When in India, it is 2.7 crores. That is 16% of the world patients are in India, which is really painful. And if you see in Delhi alone, there are about 14 lakh people. That means 5% of total Indians are in Delhi. Now just focus on the mortality. The mortality is about 2.15% in the world, which is quite high from our point of view, medical point of view. And it's 1.2% in India, less as compared to the global figure. But if you see in Delhi alone, it is 1.7% which is very high mortality. I think that's a quite concern. That's how we thought that we must have some protocol by which we can enhance the awareness to reduce the morbidity and mortality, which is COVID infected. We all know by now that the COVID has been transmitted by various methods, 
initially it was thought by aerosols or by droplet infection and now recently the second wave there was a lot of news that it is a airborne because the new strain on the mutation which is b1617 very highly infectious very highly virulent and the mortality is very high and it has really hit the india very high especially the young population so ladies and gentlemen i like to give you a message that this is the only disease covid in the world which is hijacks the body right from head to the toe it is pro inflammatory that means it causes inflammation right from head to the toe everywhere it causes clotting what we call is pro thrombotic it is immunogenic it forms immunogenic reactions in the body so this is the first disease which is lethal and of its kind for the first time in the world a new disease with the new mechanisms so that's how there is a need of the protocol and this is such a disease that it makes a person immunodeficient and that's how they are vulnerable to go into so called opportunistic infection in the form of bacterial infection fungal infection like mycorrhizosis because a lot of these patients receive steroids and that's how the need of the protocol and in india as we all know we are the world capital of hypertension and diabetes and heart attacks and cancer so we are immunologically compromised so our elderly population beyond 40 was highly vulnerable to this disease for the obvious reasons which i mentioned to you comorbidity is the main reason that's how the need of protocol now the symptoms of covid are very well known to you we have seen in the first wave most of our individuals came with a very high fever headaches body aches loss of smell and loss of taste but not in second wave in second wave the loss of smell and taste is less but the sore throat was a dominant feature even some people have conjunctivitis some patients have even rash and some people came to us with a heart attack brain attack leg attack abdominal attack and eye attack which was not there in the previous one which is very painful that's why we call this as a virulent virus an infectious virus and deadly virus especially the mutation name which i mentioned to you b1617 and there is a prediction as uh, suggested by mr atul sopti that in the years to come we will have second mutation and we'll have a third variant and third variant what will be the natural history we still do not know till we get the problems which is expected at any moment the question asked to me by brishali is why protocol and what is the protocol why there is a need of the protocol the answer is everybody should know what are the signs and symptoms we just learned everybody should know what are the diagnostic methods and everybody should know how to classify these patients and then adopt and adapt it to the lifestyle and the medication medication should not be taken by self protocol and guidelines should be followed so that we can reduce the morbidity and mortality if we take self medication then the mortality is going to be very high because the virus is very very virulent and a very important information which i would like to give you here that the symptomatology varies because the disease has got a spectrum of 14 days first seven days in the last seven days they are very different and first seven days people have prodromal symptoms which i mentioned to you and the second uh, uh seven days there is a real cytokine storm and a thrombin storm 
which may make your life miserable and anybody can become a victim of such a storm your sudden deaths have been noted now how do we classify these patients these patients can be classified into six categories based on clinical picture based on various inflammatory markers which we use as crp or interleukin 6 and sometimes we base serum ferritin and ldh and third important thrombotic marker as a d dimer and the fourth marker is a imaging marker and that is by hrct chest so these are the four bases by which we classify our patients as asymptomatic 90% of patients are asymptomatic those who are young they will not have any symptom except mild fever headaches and body ache and you will see all the parameters are normal what are parameters we do oxygen saturation clinically and we see the respiratory rate breathing rate if there is no breathing difficulty and your oxygen saturation is more than 94 that means a mild fever you are asymptomatic with covid positive so we will call it covid positive asymptomatic then there is a mild moderate severe critical and critical with comorbidity now here if i take inflammatory markers up to 20 varies in mild to 20 to 40 40 to 60 60 to 80 and beyond 80 is critical this is our own classification based on what i have seen in last two years the highest level of normal level of crp is 6 if it is beyond 6 it is not normal up to 20 is variable sometimes there is a stress it may go up to 20 so that's why we say 20 to 40 is mild and beyond normals similarly interleukin 6 normal level is up to 7 if it goes by three fold rise six fold rise nine fold rise or 12 fold rise depending on the severity of the infection and the third third one is d dimer normal level of d dimer is 0.5 if it is more than 0.5 then again 3 fold 6 fold 9 fold and 12 fold rise upon the severity of the and the most important is hrct ladies and gentlemen these investigations like crp or interleukin or d dimers had to be done serially first week second week and subsequently also so don't have any hitch don't confuse yourself it has to be done as a protocol similarly hrct has to be done from seventh day onwards hrct has got various segments in the lung and this virus called cytokine storm when it produces cytokine or a clotting storm you may get a patch of pneumonia or a clotting in the lung and the only imaging technique which can pick up is by ct scan there is no controversy so far as x ray is concerned it may miss many findings and the radiation exposure is only 3 or 4 times more than x ray chest for x rays which is nothing because it's a life saving so we give a diagnostic prognostic and therapeutic implications of this protocol so everybody has to undergo a ct scan to know whether lung is involved or not and again we grade it zero asymptomatic up to 9 ct score mild to moderate mild 9 to 14 is moderate 15 to 19 is severe beyond 19 all all critical when the oxygen saturation dip down to less than 85 so when the oxygen saturation is beyond 94 is normal if on exertion like going to the bathroom or speaking or eating food it comes down a little but still more than 90 and less than 94 it is bearable and can be managed at home but if it goes less than 89 it's a matter of concern there we need a oxygen at home or oxygen concentrator at home but if it goes less than 85 despite 5 liters of oxygen which you get by the concentrator then we should think of shifting a patient to the hospital or if a person's respiratory rate is more than 30 is distinct is breathless going to the bathroom or even slightest exertion 
don't take a risk of keeping such patients at home. This is very, very important. And there should not be any ambiguity in the protocol. The virus behavior should be known to each and every one of us. If you think that everything will be done by the doctor, it's not correct. 90% of things are done by the patients and the public. They have to understand. If you don't understand, we are there only to manage the emergency, but not at home. And of course, we don't visit a patient. So there is a need of so-called tele-video consultation. So I did a maximum consultation last two months, enormous, every five seconds. So you can imagine what kind of stress I had gone through in the last two months. So I think telemedical consultation is the need of the hour. First seven days, only inflammatory markers rise in clinical picture. Last seven days are obnoxious. You may get clotting, you may get breathlessness, you may have fall of oxygen, and you may get a high score depending on your CT scan. So these are all the protocols have to be understood that every patient has to follow a protocol. Please don't go to any chemist shop and don't start self-medication. First seven days, we treat our patients only by taking some painkillers or analgesics like paracetamol or we give meptal or we give dolo. Our aim is to give the temperature less than 99. We give vitamin C to improve your immunity, vitamin D to improve your immunity, zinc to improve your immunity. And we also give some patients benefit of low oxygenation, some oxygen. Role of ivermectin, there is no data to support. We have been using ivermectin for the last 30 years as an antiparasitic drug. So there is no data to show the benef benefits of this uh, drug in the beginning. No need of any Febi flu. There is no strong data. So it has been used in some people by some patients, but the strong data is not in favor. So first seven days are over. Then the next seven days are very crucial and very, very important. Here comes the role of steroids. Steroid is a very useful drug because it's anti-inflammatory. So almost 99% of people need steroids. The only thing is should be left to the specialist. The specialist should give the protocol depending on the associated comorbidity. If you give a high dose, then you're more vulnerable to get bacterial infection or fungal infection. So inappropriate use of steroids is harmful. But Steroids has to be give, given in a proper protocol. It's a panacea. It is like a game changer once upon a time. It was a game changer. I used a lot of patients, a lot of people, even from PSUs, I've used when there are no other drugs available. It really helped individuals when I managed even at home. I have managed patients at home even up to a score of 14. More than 14, everybody has to be hospitalized. That's about strong recommendation as a protocol. Please don't stay at home. You may not get a time. There is shortage of beds, shortage of oxygen. Everything was a problem. And the third thing, which is very important, is once you go to the oxygen hospital, then in the hospital, we always make it a point to give anticoagulants. But if we ask for a firm opinion, the clotting starts from sixth to seventh day. So why not to start anticoagulant before the cytokines stop? Why should we wait when this storm has taken place and a clot has formed and then you're starting anticoagulant drugs? But the data available in the world today is after the cytokine storm or during the cytokine storm. We must start preventive that will really help a lot of our patients. And the best anticoagulant or a blood thinner which is available in the market today is Revaraxaban. Revaraxaban is a drug of choice, very cost effective, we can use it. It is only those people who have a kidney failure, we can't give them, or a pregnant lady, or a lactating mother, we can't use, or somebody's got a mechanical or prosthetic valves, we can't use it. Otherwise, it's the safest drug. The second word, please do not stop antiplatelet drugs. If you undergone angioplasty, or a bypass surgery, or you have a stent, and you are on antiplatelet drugs, don't stop it. There's a lot of confusion on blood thinners. So no confusion on blood thinners. This is a very important part in the second half of 
14 days. It should be continued. Regarding the hypertension, please continue ARBs and ACE inhibitors. Don't stop. They want statins to be continued. They are protective. They have benefits in the treatment of these patients. Third is about the oxygen. Any patient can be given oxygen at home by oximetry and by checking the oximetry. We can give it by the oxygen cylinder, by mask or by uh, bionasal catheter or if the requirement is more than 5 liters or 10 liters, you can give oxygen at home. I remember the patients in my hospital, we were given up to 60 liters and they are safe. I have a patient who had score of 25 by 25, 31 year old engineer. Everybody lost hope. The fellow was known to me through somebody. We managed the patient on high flow oxygen. Gave him steroids and gave him monoclonal antibodies, two doses. So monoclonal antibodies are a great role. A REM that's weird. We reduce the load. It's very important. And this patient had very high CRP levels, high D-divers, like a storm, and had very high levels of interleukin. So we must ensure what kind of patient you are dealing with. So if we protocolize our patients, we can reduce the morbidity and mortality. A word of caution to each and every one of you. When we check the oximeter at home, please make sure that your fingers are not wet. Your fingers are not dirty. And you properly use the instrument. Otherwise, it may give you a false reading. So that is a very important caution which you should know. We should not have any fear psychosis. We must have a good immunity. So I think protocolization is the need of the hour if you really want to reduce the morbidity and mortality, and we must follow the mindfulness and meditation during COVID and even after COVID. And there are a lot of questions which are coming up these days on after COVID care, I'm sure, uh, which we'll be responding in the next so few Professor, minutes. Right now, we are being bombarded with lots of questions that are coming. We have callers who are waiting. We have a lot of questions also. Bahut sare aate hai. In fact, just take a little break and go to the questions and then we can continue my chat. Sure. Uh, we have Varma, who is the Deputy GM of IOCL, waiting uh, to ask a question. Uh, doc, uh, Mr. Varma, please uh, ask your question, sir. Mr. Deep Varma, can you hear us? Yeah, am I audible? Yes, 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 you are absolutely. Doing. Yeah, uh, very good morning, Doctor. Uh, yeah, very good morning, Doctor Chopra, and uh, the whole team of SCOP. It's a wonderful, wonderful day for all of us. Uh, thank you very much for organizing such a uh, apt uh, webinar on uh, during this pandemic era, uh, Doctor Chopra. My question has three parts actually. Uh, very small one. That is, uh, part one is uh, what are the special care to be taken by a patient having CAD uh, stents in heart. The part B is. Uh, how to manage post-COVID uh, complications? And part three, uh, controversial two, uh, what is the role of naturopathy, yoga, and uh, Ayurveda in COVID management and treatment? So three part of my question. Uh, yeah, over to you, Dr. Chowda. Thank you very much. I think uh, all the three components and three parts are very, very important. The first part is, if a person has got a coronary artery disease with stent or without stent, we should continue antiplatelet drugs. They are at a high risk, as I mentioned to you, since this virus is a clotting virus, an inflammatory virus. It may cause inflammation in the blood vessels. It narrows down and make the blood more viscous and thick. So we must add anticoagulants also. You can ask me, sir, can we give anticoagulants and antiplatelets together? The answer is yes. Why not? If the person is on aspirin or clopidogrel, Please add a Revaraxamar. It's very, very safe. No problems at all. The added morbidity and mortality is higher in the patients who are elderly with a comorbidity like this. So if any patient under any angioplasty or stenting, he has to be more careful and should be vigilant that his blood pressure doesn't go high, his pulse does not become high, he doesn't get irregularity of the pulse, and his sugar is also under control and cholesterol is also under control. If he's also having associated hypertension, please be sure the blood pressure is controlled and don't stop any drugs. 
the requirement of drugs like beta blockers or calcium channel blockers or ARB and AC inhibitor also increase in patients who have undergone angioplasty or stenting during COVID. The second question which you asked is about the uh, uh, about this uh, how to manage of, post COVID. Yeah, yeah. Post COVID, this is a very very important question because, in fact, uh, you'll be very happy to know that I am the first person in the world who has created a post COVID rehabilitation program by evaluating heart and vascular flow profile. I should not say that a lot of people from the scope who have come to me and they've gone through this pro flow profile. What I do is I see the vascular profile, the carotid vascular profile, the peripheral arterial profile, venous profile, and a complete Doppler echo, just to see that there's no clot anywhere. Why I'm telling you, because a lot of patients do inappropriate exercise at home after they recover. I remember a patient who came to me, he said, sir, my COVID is negative. I felt very happy. And I went for an evening dance program and he danced till one o'clock in the night. And next morning he was dead. I know of a patient who did a treadmill on second day and he had the same complication. You just heard day before yesterday, Mr. Bhatia, who had a COVID once upon a time, inappropriate exertion may give rise to a very high mortality and morbidity. Why I'm telling you, we should understand, in post-COVID time, they may have involvement of coronary arteries, increased vulnerability for more events. They may have a muscle involvement of the heart, what we call the myocarditis. It also affects the autonomic nervous system, cause tachycardia, and may also cause a tendency for pulmonary embolism, clotting in the lung circuit, which is more prone. So we have to be very, very careful after COVID and we must evaluate ourselves that we are fit. And the second word of caution is every person after COVID should start a graded way of exercise, not unaccustomed exercise, high mortality, high number of patients, huge number of patients who had a very high mortality because they didn't understand what kind of exercise they should do. Plenty of fluids, they should take even boosters, and be slow in your activities. It can also cause DVT, deep vein thrombosis. I had a young guy who was 42 year old, had a clotting in the veins. And my own data, I'm telling you, 20% of patients in the post COVID time have clotting in the veins. So until unless I see them, how do I know who's getting clotting and who's not getting clotting? And the second question, which I'd like to mention, since you asked post COVID, everybody, who is on Revaraxaban should take from six weeks to eight weeks Revaraxaban as advised by the specialist. Should be given at least 10 milligram to 15 milligram to 20 milligram, depending on the comorbidity. Especially ladies who are having periods, they must uh, give a little uh, gap for three to four days. Sometimes they have a little more bleeding there. And those who have fissures or fistula, they may also have some bleeding tendencies. Otherwise, it is a very safe, cost-effective, and totally help in the reduction of morbidity and mortality. So COVID, cardiac mortality are known. Other, other things are also there. If you've got asthma or bronchitis, your lungs are affected. So you should go for a lung function evaluation. And please make sure in post-COVID time, after six weeks, have your CT scan. The I advise three CT scans. First on eighth or ninth day, then after giving a full treatment in the hospital, and then on third, doing the rehabilitation. So that we have an idea that the lung anatomy is preserved and lung functions are preserved. It is only in those who are severe cases, not in mild or moderate cases. Moderate cases, we need only one or two. In mild cases, we need only one. So it all depends on the protocol. Just go by the protocol, not by your protocol. Doctor's protocol it is very important. By this, we can reduce the morbidity and mortality. Second important question which you asked me after COVID care is the cognition. Some people have a memory reduction because the blood flow is reduced to the brain vessels. They may get fatigue. They may get fever. I've seen some patients who are even getting a rise in CRP levels and fever again coming up after two months to three months. That means the inflammatory process is still there. The activity is still there. 
so it goes on for three to four months this is known as sir what we call is systemic inflammatory syndrome so post covid syndrome is a systemic inflammatory syndrome i also call it as systemic clotting syndrome so you have to be careful that you should not have clotting and you should not have uh, inflammation if at all is there please see your doctor and go for a protocol the protocol of cardiovascular health which i am going to launch very soon in my hospital as heart and vascular flow profile protocol should be done in everybody some people have kidney injury some have a liver injury some may even have intestinal injury i would just like to narrate two patients sir with your permission who is also post covid they didn't bother and they attended parties in the rotary and one person had inflammation of the bowels and had perforation of the bowel and succumbed another patient also had a similar issue they had a bowel problem inflammation of the bowel and perforations multiple perforations and it is on this perforation so called fungi are formed what we call the white fungus or a black fungus or a yellow fungus so you should be aware of this is systemic inflammatory disease right from head to the toe so everything has to be considered post covid care is the need of the hour covid care is the need of the hour without protocol it's not possible the last question which you asked sir role of yoga and ayurveda i must tell you today the definition of yoga should be known to us yoga means union of mind body and soul when i say yoga it does not mean only asanas it is yama niyama asana pranayam pratihara dharana dhyana and samadhi you may get confused if you don't know hindi so yama means do's and don'ts niyama means self discipline asana means various postures which you see lot of gurus don't follow them follow the scientific gurus you yourself are a scientific guru don't follow anybody for this if you understand it and practice at home and fourth one is pranayam breathing exercises pratihara contemplation dharana concentration dhyana meditation and samadhi that's what we are discussing today and uh, madam soma also addressed on this issue and i have told you already i am doing chakra meditation for last 30 years i am not doing just for the sake of doing it it helps me a lot so everybody should be in meditation mode all the time and should be in the mindfulness mode all the time so far as the medicines are concerned of yoga we need validation we are scientists we don't believe in anything without validation they use lot of herbs i don't know what are the level of potassium or toxic they are for kidney patients so we don't have a data whatever data we have we use those if we have data we don't use them. so it's a data based yoga is very good yoga is a way of life we all should do it i follow a yogic life i don't smoke i don't drink and i don't take non vegetarian so i think i don't say you should not take non vegetarian but i just want if you smoke and have covid mortality is high morbidity is high and if you have excessive alcohol again you will fall victim to all kind of problems for if you take non vegetarian like fish and chicken it's fine sometimes but no meat no red meat so i think that's my message to yoga and uh, uh, ayurveda and other things but please keep on taking immuno boosters like vitamin c d and z there are some controversy about zinc if you take too much of zinc more mucormycosis but i think it's very limited if you take it very high dose for a long time we are advocating only for 3 to 6 months after you go through crisis of so called post covid crisis you don't need it and vitamin c and vitamin d is a normal requirement so we advise you normal requirement as the age grows we have lot of wear and tear in our body so we must continue yoga for the life i must tell you ladies and gentlemen today please get a message i do om bilom before breakfast every day in the morning i do before lunch i request you also to do it and i do it before dinner and i am 70 and i work for almost 16 hours a day and write textbooks every year you just heard the introduction from vishal it's all in your mind 
if your mindset is strong and mindfulness, and if you work from the level of consciousness, you are going to be very happy and we can get rid of COVID very effectively. And this will be the game changer. The game changer is mindfulness with mask for next two years. Meditation with mass meditation. Everybody should be calm, no aggression. And mass vaccination. These are three M's by which we can get rid of COVID and become COVID free. This is known as COVID eradication program. And I'm very happy that we started from here. Any other question? Yes, uh, Dr. Chopra, loads of questions are coming and I'm going to now quick take them quickly uh, one after the other. We have a second caller, uh, Antim, Antim Kumar uh, Jaiswal, who's the DGM of NTPC. Uh, Mr. Jaiswal, if you're there, please ask your question. While we are lining him up, uh, Dr. Chopra, I must thank you for the detailed answer that you gave. And I think uh, COVID has made us all realize how important it is for uh, us to keep a track of our bodies. So many, uh, for the last so many years, doctors have been talking about this. I think COVID has just given it a, it, it a push that unless you really take care of your health, take care of your diet uh, and are into it completely, you're not going to be able to get rid of this problem very soon. So quickly, if people learn, uh, it's going to really work. Okay, we have uh, Mr. Antim Kumar ready and waiting to ask his question. So please go ahead, Mr. Kumar. Uh, uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. First of all, th thanks to SCOPE for organizing such a wonderful event. And uh, I thanks to sir. Uh, sir, I have one question. Actually, I am COVID recovered patient. I have symptoms, uh, first symptoms on 23rd of April. Now I'm suffering from skin rashes. Initially, it was red like chicken pox. Now it is normal skin rashes. So what is the reason and treatment of the same? I think it's very important as I mentioned to you, since it's a systemic inflammatory state, rash is part and parcel of it. You must see your doctor and should be given anti-inflammatory drugs. When you give anti-inflammatory drugs over a period of time, it will disappear. You need to do your CRP so that we have an idea as to what is the level of CRP. And based on that, the therapy can be discussed and rule out other causes of rash also. When rash in post-COVID time does not mean 100% it is COVID-related. You must see the specialist and the specialist will decide is it COVID related or non-COVID related. It is known that those who are in the recovery phase of COVID, rash is one of the manifestations which has to be taken care of by the drugs advised by the specialist as indeed inflammatory drugs. It is very safe and you're not to worry much about it and it will disappear. It won't stay for a long time. Thank you, sir. Okay, great. I hope that it addresses uh, Mr. Jaiswal's question. The next follow we have is uh, Mr. Sham Sundar Sethi, who is the GM of Hindustan Copper. Sir, if you are standing by, please ask your question. Mr. S uh, Sham Sundar Sethi, uh, if you are online, please go ahead and ask your question. Ma'am? Hello? Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Chupra and whole scope team. Uh, actually, my question is, uh, I am having anxiety resulting in very high heartbeat. Also, I am the blood pressure patient and uh, in the night, uh, there is no sleep, uh, hardly one and two hours sleeping. Uh, should I take some medicines for this? And the heartbeat is around 130, 140. Very important question you asked, sir. And I mentioned many times that we should remember seven S. Number one S sir. is salt restriction. Number two S is no saturated fat. And number three S is we should be very, very careful about smoking. We should be very careful about stress. And we should be very careful about excessive sugar. And the last seven is very important, adequate sleep. If you are missing something somewhere, excess or deficient, you are bound to get a problem. 
Your question is your anxiety. This is also a post COVID syndrome. I had a young girl who called me yesterday, 31 year old from Lajpat Nagar and said, sir, I'm very anxious after recovery from COVID. I don't get sleep and I'm getting palpitations. Same as what you spoke. So all these patients, we give a little beta blockers in the form of Concor, what we call bisoprolol tablet to reduce the heart rate because our heart rate should never go beyond 85 or so. It may affect the heart adversely. And number two, we should have adequate sleep. There is a brain and heart axis. It liberates chemicals in the body. If there is excessive liberation of catecholamines, epinephrine and non-epinephrine, it will cause palpitation. And this happens when you don't have adequate sleep. So you must sleep adequately six to eight hours. Now the question is how to get sleep. Some people they take melatonin tablets, some they sure. take Alprex, very safe Alprex. If one takes Alprex, they're safe, no addiction. Take it for a short while and then gradually you start your exercise protocol. This is all because of fear, anxiety, as I mentioned to you. Sure. If you do a mindfulness and meditation every day and take some tablets for a short period of time, it will really help you and pulse and all will be all right. Still, if I request you, since you mentioned the word, you are hypertensive, you should go to your cardiologist, get your BP checked, Get your ECG done and get your echo also done to see whether there is any event rate on the heart or not. We should try to understand what is the cause of this and treat accordingly. So you must see your cardiologist and do not keep it to yourself high heart rate or high blood pressure or anxiousness or sleeplessness. It may have an adverse effect. You should see your doctor and they are treatable and curable. Very smooth. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we have our next caller ready in meeting. Uh, uh, Mr. Rajaram Barde, uh, who is the GM of ONGC. He is waiting uh, for his for the next call. Uh, can you ask your question, please, Mr. Barde? Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, myself, Parar Barde. Uh, actually, uh, every day we are uh, listening to uh, our near and dear are affected or something uh, fatality is going on. So this negative thoughts and this stress level increasing. So how to avoid this uh, negative thoughts and stress level to calm, uh, <laughs> to remain stress free? Very difficult question, but I will give you a very simple answer. Right. The answer is please meditate every day 20 minutes morning 20 minutes evening to calm you down number two okay. have mindfulness number three don't have negative thoughts always try to wipe down the negative thoughts and change it to the positive thoughts i know 90 percent of thoughts are wasteful thoughts it's only 10 percent of productive thoughts try to change it this is your hands and but how to avoid four, these negative thoughts? Our aim is not to avoid, but replace okay. them with the positive thoughts. It is in your hands. And have adequate sleep. And be very bold. Follow the nature. Sit in the garden. Look at the beauty. Beauty of the nature. Look at the plants. Look at the galaxy. Look at the flowers. At the moment you can't go out, you can do it from home. Be busy. Keep your mind busy in positive things. If your children or grandchildren, be with them so that your mind is not a wandering mind your mind is a stable mind and a conscious mind and you go to the deeper level of silence then you won't get negative thoughts negative thoughts come that is the nature of the mind mind is a wandering brain in the whole body and it causes all kind of turbulence and changes in the chemistry so we need to stabilize it and it is a lot of work required because somebody asked the question of yoga, the same answer, we must try to meditate every day. I already uh, speaking to Mr. Atul Sopti before the session started that I really like to have a session here by Dr. Deepak Chopra, who is the world authority on promise and power of meditation. And we'll do a program for you all so that the stress can be eliminated. We all remain in a calmer mode. I'll request him 
and very shortly they are going to organize a program how to face how to face or calm ourselves from this uh, covid pandemic or in covid times by doing meditation and all the techniques methods and the benefits of meditation can be discussed if you meditate the requirement of medicines are significantly reduced your palpitation will come down and you personally you will feel yourself you will become a very loving man to yourself and to everybody around you but please meditate and no consumption of toxins like smoking tobacco alcohol they have an additional value of adding more stress and unaccustomed stress should be avoided as i mentioned to you like treadmill or bull working or going to a gym should not be done for 3 months after recovery from the covid so i hope that addresses your question uh, mr bardi thank you for joining us today uh, dr chopra before going to more callers uh, there are some other questions which are coming and very pertinent i'm going to read them out uh, black fungus ki hum baat kar rahe the uh, mucor mycosis ab jo bolte hain uh, it's rampant uh, we've been hearing of lots of cases and serious situations uh, leading to even death at times so the question is uh, why does it happen why does it occur and what are the preventive steps uh, for black fungus up to how many days uh, are the chances of black fungus occurring after covid recovery i think it's a very good question because in delhi there is an epidemic of black fungus only day before yesterday i was reading the newspaper there are more than 1004 cases of black fungus in my own hospital there are about six patients of black fungus with me and those patients solid to a very heavy dose of steroids outside in appropriate and almost 80 to 90% of them were diabetics uncontrolled diabetics so those who are uncontrolled diabetics and those who are taking heavy dose of steroids on the top of it their immunity becomes low so they may get a septicemia or to call it bacterial infection or a mucormycosis mucormycosis or a black fungus is not black in nature because the circulation is reduced in the body it usually happens on the face it happens on the cheek what we call as zygomatic bone nose eyes brain and maybe in the skin or maybe go to the intestine this fungus is usually present in the soil and is also in the air in the air and also in our body in the mucus but remains dormant it becomes virulent and attacks us when we have uncontrolled diabetes and uncontrolled uh, sugar or uncontrolled inappropriate dose of steroids so the mortality of this fungus is quite high i had one patient who was diabetic i also gave her monoclonal antibodies her score was 20 by 25 and her eye became black i inoculated the eye we had to get the eye removed and debridement made on the structures but most of the patient will lose it's only few who are treated by empotericin b empotericin b is a drug of first choice in these people or also we use sometimes a oral uh, medication also in these patients and we give about 5 mg per kg of body weight for about 14 days and then they have to go for surgical uh, debridement and they recover the question is how early and how late it all depends on your immunological status so there is no definition of marker of it anybody who is immunodeficient is more prone to go to fungal infections and they are not only uh, mucormycosis they can be aspergillosis coccidiomycosis nocardiasis all those things can happen and the worst is mucormycosis because the mortality is very high once it goes to the brain so you have to be careful second word of caution anybody who is a high dose of steroids given by someone without understanding it will reduce the immunity may cause clotting in the vessels of the uh, intestine and may cause enteritis diarrhea and may also cause fungal infection there after perforation i have seen two patients who had multiple perforation with fungal infection and they called it a white fungus fungus is fungus white or black it doesn't make any difference so i think our answer is only very clear that please judicious use of steroids should be avoided and if you are diabetic control diabetes 
Congress will not attack. And if you have a high severity of COVID, beyond 20 upon 25, then you are more vulnerable because you receive high dose of steroids or you even you receive monoclonal antibodies and you receive remdesivir. So I think you're more prone. But nobody uses plasma therapy these days because this is out of uh, uh, protocol now. We don't use it. But I think we should use a very cautious dose of steroids and controlled diabetes. And we will not get the fungal infection. We should not be any fearful. But if it is there, timely treatment is in need of the heart. Don't delay the treatment. If you delay the treatment, then the prognosis is there. Okay. Thank you, uh, Dr. Jopra. Uh, and important question. And this, uh, after this, I'm going to go back to callers. Is on vaccination. We have, uh, with God's grace, a huge population of 1.3 billion people which need to get vaccinated over the next uh, four months, six months, whatever it takes, as quickly as possible. But there is always a question and a fear uh, of which vaccine to take. What is the different technology being adopted while uh, COVID shield is being administered, Covaxin is being administered? Also, we are hearing about something called the mRNA technology. What is that about? And uh, in your advice, uh, what should it be that people need to look out for when they're taking the vaccine? I think it's a very, very important question, uh, Risha. I firmly believe that there should be a mass vaccination program. You asked me a very good question, which vaccine is good? I say all vaccines are good. The only technology is different. For example, mRNA vaccine, like a Pfizer vaccine or Moderna, or uh, we use uh, uh, even Zydus in India is making mRNA vaccine, which is going to be launched very soon. Johnson Johnson, which is single dose in the United States is also a mRNA vaccine. mRNA vaccines are those where the vaccines are given to an individual, not made by the virus, but they stimulate our cells to produce spike-like proteins. So when they make, make spike-like protein, antibodies are produced. So whenever the COVID virus attacks the human host, it needs spikes. So that takes those spikes, which are already on the cells in our body, where already antibodies are produced. So the cells or the virus activity is nullified. So that's the technology which they use. But here what we use is either a live attenuated virus or a dead attenuated virus mechanism is same. So far as the efficacy is concerned, it varies. They mentioned up to 90% is the mRNA, non-mRNA is 82, 83%. But for practical purposes, all the viruses, all the vaccines are excellent. No vaccine is worse than to have a vaccine. And you should follow the vaccine, whether we get single dose and then a double dose and then a booster dose. We don't have much data about the booster dose, but only one caution is there. If you are an elderly patient, say 80s or 90s or 70s, with comorbidity like angioplasty, stenting or bypass or a valve replacement, and if you are on a blood thinners, please don't stop the blood thinners. Because the tendency of a clotting is reduced to almost 0.04%, but it's there. I saw a patient who had all kinds of comorbidities. She received a second dose of injection, and she had a slight clotting in the radial artery. So this is a precaution. All the elderly patients already on aspirin. I take aspirin every day. So why we not stop aspirin? Unfortunately, people stop aspirin and they stop antiplatelet drugs. So that's how they get clotting. Otherwise, they're very safe, very efficacious, and these are all available. And I'm sure my suggestion and appeal to the government of India through this platform of scope and families, that we must import, export, manufacture vaccines, vaccines, and vaccines. And everybody should be vaccinated, boy or girl, young or old, male or female, all should be vaccinated. By vaccines, we will produce a herd immunity. People who suffered and vaccine when we make a herd immunity, we can eradicate the virus. That's the future. 
if you really want to ask me what is the game changer going to be the game changer going to be 3m as i told you mask mindfulness meditation and mask vaccination vaccination is the need of the hour now don't ask me covid shield or covaxin both are good choice is yours what you want to be i was vaccinated twice by covid shield now in our hospital covaxin is available so people are getting covaxin there is subtle difference i don't think we should go to the subtle difference it has no meaning it is a benefit versus risk ratio the benefit is much more than the risk why you bother about the risk everybody every medicine you take is a risk you take cortisone there is a risk you take aspirin there is a risk you take anything in life there are benefits versus risk so if there are 95% benefits why to bother about 5% risk so i don't think there is any controversy about the vaccines the only thing is about the lactating mother and again on pregnant mother they have to be a little careful those people who have tendency for anaphylaxis or allergic reactions they should take the help of a doctor what i do i should tell you when i got vaccinated i took a precaution i took adequate amount of water waited for half an hour after half an hour i took paracetamol tablet when i reached home i took one more paracetamol tablet so there are no body aches no headache no soreness at the site of injection and the second day also since i am a working man i took two paracetamol no issue no problem at all so i advise everybody if you take paracetamol is anti inflammatory if a minor inflammation is bound to happen since it's a vaccine antigen it goes to you to produce antibodies if you take care of that it's very very safe and everybody should be vaccinated which is the need of the day so what i hear you say dr chopra is ki vaccine lena zaruri hai kaun sa vaccine hai uska farak nahi padta because there is a full medical team at the back end doing all the research and making sure it's available to you so everybody who is thinking twice please go out there get yourself vaccinated make sure that you queued up and take in your appointment etc uh, and now in fact there are lots of free camps that the government is doing so uh, हरी अपन गो आउट है डॉक्टर चोपड़ा एक क्विक सवाल ये है कि बार बार आता है लोगों के ध्यान में अगर मुझे कोविड है आफ्टर द फर्स्ट वैक्सीन कोविड हो गया है मुझे कितने गैप के बाद में अपना सेकंड वैक्सीन लेना चाहिए इट्स वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन इफ यू हैव अ कोविड पॉजिटिव माय कोविड टेस्ट आरटीपीसीआर द स्पेसिफिसिटी इज 70% सेंसिटिविटी इज 100% If it is COVID antigen, there fifty percent specificity, and if you have COVID negative, does not mean you don't have COVID. And third is NAT. NAT is a nucleic acid amplification test, which is a new test for COVID. You have to make sure that you have COVID. And the fourth one is the COVID antibodies. Number of times patient come to us with the pneumonia, and I do the blood test, they are COVID negative. but i see their extra ct scan they have pneumonia so what do i do i see their antibodies if the antibodies are present that means a patient had covid in the past test is negative but antibodies are present so antibodies are also in that method but nat is a very specific and sensitive test some labs in delhi are doing this is known as nucleic acid amplification test but if you are positive by all the methods vaccine should be after 3 months not before 3 months because you have enough antibodies but there was one patient who came to me very intelligent and his antibodies were more than 250 after 4 months of vaccination so he put me in trouble so what should i do should i take or should i not take so i told him no vaccination required when there are so many antibodies inside why do you need a vaccination then he asked me booster dose then i told him we we'll ask this question answer only when the time of booster dose comes because they get disintegrated after two three months they won't stay for a longer time so he lives in sunny farm and i'm sure he will come to me he is a diabetic also if he find his covid antibodies are disintegrated then we'll do it unfortunately his daughter in law suffered from covid 28 years old she was a ventilator for one and a half month she has two small children one year old and two and a half year old child she was also put on ecmo she could not survive 
some people they even go for lung transplant because the lung injury is so much i think that should not come so covid vaccination for you to understand three months is the time but if the antibodies are enormous more than 250 or 200 you can wait and watch so take the help of a doctor and see the antibodies discuss with the doctor these are known these are known as neutralizing antibodies spike anti spike neutralizing antibodies if the titer is high please don't go for vaccination if the titer is less than 150 or 200 uh 3 months you should wait to go for the vaccination that's a cut off point okay. uh we have another caller i think the question is related to vaccinations uh, we have uh, mr gs bawa who is the ex gm of aai uh mr bawa if you are standing by could you please ask your question uh i am gs bawa am i audible yes sir yes sir please go ah right uh thank you very much for taking the question and i personally feel that some kind of a telepathy was working while the doctor was answering the question and i must appreciate the efforts being done by dr chopra and the team at the scope my question is sir personally uh, a sort of a personal question which relates to my father my father is 87 year plus and he is a advocate by profession and then he is into lot of me medication Uh, be it uh, for some heart ailment, be it for uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, breathing, he is on nebulizer twice every day, and then he has got other medications. Then he says that he need not to be vaccinated while he is at home all the times. He say you ensure that no one comes in house who is uh, uh, affected, and you advise. I personally feel asking this question will be answering many other minds also. Thank you, sir. I think it's a very very good question. because we see lot of patients who are coming to us after 85 or 90 they are reluctant to get vaccination because they think that vaccination may cause some clotting or some inflammation or some problem and they may not live for a longer time so say why not take precautions nobody should visit me at home i should be secluded in the house i personally feel that everybody should be vaccinated if a person has got underlying comorbidity in the form of heart medication or kidney medication or diabetes medication or stroke medication please continue the medication get yourself checked before getting vaccination this is what i do a lot of patient come to me and i give them fitness for vaccination if the bp is too high i will not tell them to go for vaccination if the tachycardia is there pulse is irregular and pumping action is very low or there are clotting inside i will not advise them so i personally feel after 80 or 85 you must seek an opinion of a doctor whether you are fit for vaccination or not patient should not decide whether he is fit or he is not fit for vaccination i give you one more example i have a doctor patient who is 87 year old who is under my care He is only mild COVID. He is an army guy, and uh, he received the first dose. He says you have to be there because I want to live till the age of hundred. So I went with him for vaccination. He came for second vaccination again. I went with him, and he came down after second vaccination and told me I want to be in your uh, room in the bed for half an hour, forty-five minutes to watch that everything is all right. Now this fellow has gone to America during the. covid crisis because he knew there is going to be a second wave and he never wanted to be a victim of second wave he is a doctor and he sends me the information from there that i am here and i want to come back to india maybe next month or july or august but i want full proof i should not have covid anymore so i want your advice should i go for pfizer vaccine or not very difficult question he asked me so i told him okay let me go through the data so i rang up cdc in america and i asked them do you have any profile of a booster dose because you know kali senior kali so he told us they do booster dose data with us but this medicine will be effective so i told him sir you come back here in india we'll make sure that by that time we'll import pfizer vaccine here and we'll give you a pfizer vaccine 
because he wanted to live till the age of 100 years. He is protecting himself. So vaccine is the best way of protection. We should nurture this idea in our family members that vaccine is the need of the heart. Don't deprive yourself from vaccination. It is a must, which everybody should be done. Because we want to have some kind of immunity. Otherwise, once they get COVID, then they cannot be saved at the age of 90 years. I hope I am clear, sir. Mr. Baba, I hope your question was answered. Uh, I'm quickly going to take this because this is a very complicated question. Jo aaya hai query. Uh, Dr. Chopra, I am going to squeeze in kar rahi uh, My father, age 72, has the following complications. Allergy. He has very strong allergy to certain foods like dals and pulses. If he consumes such items, he develops edema. His BP comes down and requires hospitalization. He has COPD. He is on medication and puffs. He, uh, and heart related, he has undergone angioplasty several years ago and is on strong cardiac BP and sugar medicine. So, complicated case, is he, he's asking, is it advisable to take vaccination? I think it's a very important question. If a person has got allergic to many things, we have to be very careful. The vaccination should be done only by taking a consent from the doctor, not from the patient. The doctor should give a consent that I know this person, whose IgE report is so much, Houston account is so much, he is fit or he is unfit. According to me, the way the case has been described to me, I won't advocate any vaccination because the risk is more. If you get allergic reaction or anaphylaxis, we will lose him. At least he is being alright without anaphylaxis. So it should be with the consultation of the doctor. That will be an ideal advice. Okay, Dr. Chopra, thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Chopra, you have a question from uh, Mr. Baba. You have a very pertinent question. You were talking about the incident of the 28 year old girl who had uh, COVID for more than one and a half months and she had gone through several treatments and was on uh, machines. Uh, long COVID, what is it? And what is it? Exactly, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is the method of getting out of it? See, this COVID. If CT score is more than 19, you are vulnerable to go into all complications relating to the respiratory system and cardiac system in the patients. They may get pulmonary embolism, they may get a heart attack, they may get a stroke, they may get a very high level of D-dimers. Even one of my colleagues who was in the All India Institute had a very high level of D-dimers, more than 30,000. So all these patients, they need a long-term ventilator because lung reserve is very poor. And those who don't recover despite all that are sometimes advised ECMO. ECMO is a support system, which is given to the patients. And if still they don't improve, even by ECMO, then they go into a lung transplant. Why it happens is a question asked to me by Vishal. It happens in the individuals who have delayed the treatment, number one. Improper treatment, number two. Number three, they are compromised immunologically because of other diseases like ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, cancer, or other associated diabetes, or many other comorbidities like kidney failure or dialysis, or have got a valve replacement, so many problems. This young girl had no comorbidity. This young girl has two small children. I saw their movie yesterday, very emotional. We lost her only because the virus was very virulent. The virus attacked her right from top to the bottom of the lungs, completely. She was in a score 25 by 25. So there was no scope for recovery. Very rarely these people are scored. And these days, Sometimes people think of giving a monoclonal antibodies, so-called cocktail of antibodies. But what is the data? How much of them recover? We still have to see. Even I've given a lot of patients monoclonal antibodies in my hospital. The recovery rate I found was 70%. The huge, I'm presenting a data in my hospital next month, uh, July meeting. So these are good, but I think in this particular case, I feel that she has uh, low immunity and high septicemia, bacterial infection, and high count. Maybe 
she was given high dose of steroids. And that's the reason she went to Chennai. She went to super specialty hospital in Chennai. She had a uh, ECMO therapy and everything. And we lost her. It was a very painful experience. A lot of young people were lost in this COVID. The second wave was worse for youngs. It is a lot of young people they had a massive heart attack and died in the post-COVID time and during COVID time. So I think uh, that is a catastrophe produced by the virus, which is very, very virulent. That's the reason we say need of protocolization cannot be overemphasized. We all should know. Don't treat yourself. Please go to the doctor and follow the instructions. Even if you're not able to go and doctor is not able to visit, please have a teleconsultation so that uh, you can be given proper treatment and proper time. Dr. Chopra, if we talk about long COVID, then we have to cover it. So, after that, do you have to take extra protocols post the COVID recovery? Because it's taken longer than normal COVID to recover. And you mentioned earlier, right? program ne bataya ki covid se recovery ke baad bhi hrct d dimer test wagaira karte rehna padega so uska kitne bari what is the duration how much time do you need to keep doing these tests well, it's a good question only 10 percent of patients who become a so called covid crippled and they are covid crippled because of the lung involvement or a heart involvement they need a weekly follow up and they should have a very weekly follow up. Based on that, we do ABG, their oximetry, their lung function test, their HRCT, inflammatory markers, and then take a call as to how we can adjust the medication. Some of them are even on a support system for a BiPAP, or they need a lung support. So I think they are the very, very uh, triple locations. And I think we need uh, the total follow up of this protocol to the doctors because uh, patients, attendants may not even know the extent of involvement, but the doctor, whatever he or she decides, should follow in the role of immunosuppressive treatment or in the form of ventilatory support and how they should be followed up by cardiologist or pulmonologist. A task force is required where we need a cardiologist, a physician, and a respiratory specialist, and an intensivist. They all should create a protocol if the kidney involvement we should involve a neurologist. If a neurological involvement, we should involve a neurologist. Task force is required. And the team force required the consensus of the treatment in the benefit of the patient. Uh, Dr. Chopra, if I can come to you, uh, we have been also hearing a lot of conversations about third wave. Um, second wave is not completely over yet. I mean, yes, it is good to see that the cases have gone down tremendously and, and there seems to be a positive uh, uh, reinforcement from the year. But the uh, third wave is, is likely to happen. We also heard about the fact that children are likely to get affected. So what are we actually looking towards and uh, what kind of precautions should parents take with children? So I think it's a very important question because we have to prepare ourselves now for the third wave. And the expectation is third wave may be in August or September. And the new mutation is called a double mutation. When two viruses, they mutate and they join together, they create a third variant. And third variant will come. And the prediction is it will affect more children. So we should be geared up with the PICU, MICU, neonatal ICUs, and pediatric ICUs, pediatric care, pediatric support system should be boosted up. We have learned a lot over the last two years now, one and a half year, and we should try to make sure that all the medications are available, timely hospitalization, and timely home isolation is the need of the hour. And we must make sure that our children, grandchildren, they take all precautions, and we must ensure that immediate vaccination should start in children before the second wave, third wave, so that we save our children. At least those who get COVID, they'll get a mild COVID. So that's why I'm telling you repeatedly that the need of vaccination cannot be overemphasized. We should be very fast. And we must make sure that our children get adequate vitamin C and D and zinc so that they don't they have good immunity. 
and they should be taught because they are all the time at home mentally i mean they are not so alert mentally they are a uh, little obsolete because of no schooling but they should be kept busy if they are mentally and physically healthy i'm sure will do it but the hospital should be geared up pediatrician should be geared up intensive should be geared up and we should have adequate supply of oxygen there should not be deficiency of oxygen because oxygen support is the need of the our future to save the lives and there should be adequate supply of antibiotics and adequate supply of fluids and adequate vaccination so we should be thoroughly prepared to fight with covid in the third wave of this and i think we will be able to do it so i think uh, thank you so much dr chopra also i think it's important to tell and give out the message that dr chopra has been saying and all other experts have been saying in spite of all of these and the vaccination available the best and safest and best precaution is masking and going out in public areas only when it is extremely extremely uh, urgent otherwise uh, covid has not gone out of our lives yet we need to be mindful of that we need to understand that uh, we are going to help ourselves the most than anything else uh, dr chopra we have another caller uh, we have uh, mr debayan sarkar who is the assistant manager of crwc who wants to ask a question uh, mr sarkar if you are standing by please ask your question Yes. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, myself, Devan Sarkar. <coughs> Actually, I had uh, COVID on uh, mid of April. Uh, I was admitted in the hospital for 16 days. I have come home after that. I was uh, on medication, uh, but last uh, five six days before, I have uh, developed a slight fever uh, around 100, 100.5, 100.5, and I have some uh, dry cough. So uh, I have to again visit a doctor, and uh, he asked me to go for uh, various tests, pathological tests. Where I have done uh, X-ray, where uh, in X-ray report it has uh, uh, mentioned that ill-defined uh, opacities right very hilar region in in ineffective, and uh, give, uh, done some uh, blood test uh, like CRP, ESR. My CRP is at a present uh, 11.53, ESR is 46. And DDMR is 421.41. But my uh, during the COVID days and uh, still now my uh, heartbeat pulse rate is a little bit high, uh, around 92 uh, varies 90 92 to 130. So my question is: uh, Is there any need of doing ECG or is there any complication on heart? And it is is there any orange sign for me? Because post COVID after. nearly one and half uh, one and half month still i have some fever and dry cough yes sir i already mentioned to you sir you are suffering from what we call as systemic inflammatory syndrome this okay. is a very very common as i mentioned to you to 3 to 4 months after recovery from the covid and you have given us the information that you got a mild covid like symptoms in the form of mildly raised ddmr mildly raised the crp and some new lesions in the lung so you have to be treated for this inflammatory pathology to that extent so that the inflammation is reduced by reduction of inflammation if the pulse rate is still fast i will personally advise as a cardiologist you should get your ecg done i'm sure you might be in 50s or 60s you should have an I'm ecg 40. yeah you are 40 you should have I'm an 40. ecg Yeah, you are 40. You should have an ECG and you should have an echo test just to see that everything is all right with the heart. And give you some medication like beta blockers to reduce the heart rate and take care of the inflammation. That will be the line of treatment which we will follow. You are not to worry, but don't take ignore. Actually, my also. doctor has. Uh, excuse me, sir. My doctor has given yeah. Eliquis 2.5. And uh, at present, Eliquis 2.5, uh, Mucinex 600, and Joseph 500. I am going. Yeah, I think uh, there is a little debate about Eliquis versus Revaraxaban. Eliquis is what we call Epixaban, but we recommend Revaraxaban, 10 milligram, because the data in the world is available more with Revaraxaban. So we give Revaraxaban 10 milligram to everybody to be continued for six weeks. and we find the results are very good and number 
these people like yours should be given a beta blocker. So we are taking care of blood thinner, taking care of your heart rate, and taking care of your inflammation by giving you anti-inflammatory drugs in the form of low dose of steroids and in the form of analgesics. And very shortly, you're going to be all right. But we should assess that there is no organic damage in the heart. And subsequently, we should be followed up meticulously so that you don't fall victim to so-called post-COVID syndrome, which varies from person to person, depending on the immunological status, enhance your immunity and take care of it. And the anticoagulants are an excellent idea. You should be given anticoagulants for six weeks and then anti-inflammatory drug and immunoboosters and go for a checkup to your uh, specialist so that everything is taken care of meticulously in a protocolized manner, not in a haphazard manner. You take it for one week, then stop it. After two days, reach no, 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 please. We have to be protocolized. That's the purpose. The COVID has taught us how to protocolize. Everything should be drug, should be recorded, should be in type, no handwritten, no confusion. Everything should be recorded, first prescription, second prescription, third prescription, and fourth prescription. Similarly, all the data should also be recorded. So then we can compare serially as to graph is going down, the graph is going up. So I think if you protocolize it, your recovery rate is going to be 100 percent. You'll be all right. No cause of worry. Okay. And for any specific queries, I think we should uh, get in touch with his doctor and, and take his test there. We have another caller waiting, uh, Sunny Bhai. Uh, Rekha Panduji is with us. Uh, Rekha Nani, if you're around, please ask your question. Uh, Rekha ji, are you on the call? Rekha Pandey, Senior Manager, Central Coal Fields is, is uh, if you're on the call, ma'am, please ask your question. If you can unmute your mic, ma'am, before you ask your question, you won't be able Hello, to good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. I am audible now. Yeah, you are audible. Uh, I express my humble gratitude towards Hope and Atul Sukti, sir, and doctor, sir, that we are able to interact with you directly. I have one question. What, as a layman, whether taking steam in any way leads to fungal infection, what we have a doubt that taking a regular steam will lead to thin our uh, nose uh, filter or whatsoever. And so we have a fungal infection, one. Second question is, after how many doses of second dose of COVID shield, I can feel confident that I have sufficient antibody to find uh, to fight new variant. And third, as a mother, I have that. Shall I start vitamin C, D, zinc to my child who is now 14 years? Thank you, sir. The first question is about tea. There's no relationship tea. with the family. Tea. There's okay. no relationship. You can take tea, there's no problem, no fungal relationship at all. Tea, no, no, coffee. No, steam, sir, sir, steam. Sir, sir, steam, steam, bhaap. Steam, yes, sir. Steam. Steam, steam. Yes, sir. excellent. Very good question you asked. I am taking yes, steam for the last two years every day. The only question is, you should be very careful about the protocol of steam. Don't take steam with the eyes open. Otherwise, you may get burned in the mucous membrane. You should take a very mild level of steam for a very short period of time so your nose is not congested. And you should have a towel around you, cover your eyes when you take steam. Steam will eliminate bacterial infection or correction of mucus in the nose. It is very, very safe. Oh, it's hot. So there's no question of any fungal infection. There's no relationship. The second question which you asked me about the uh, children, how, much after how, to protect, how much you should protect them by zinc or vitamin huh? C and vitamin D, why not? If it's a 14-year-old child, you should give it to them so that they will be in bursting effect. And the third question you asked me about the vaccine. Vaccine, no? Antibodies? After how much time after COVID shield, will she feel safe? She wants to know. How long yeah, after the I second vaccine? The data which is available till date to us is six months to eight months are very safe after the second dose. And I learned only yesterday by study from Lucknow 
they say the antibodies can be there up to 10 months. So if we believe the overall data, the global data is six months to eight months. But one doctor from Lucknow has shown in data and I published the paper only yesterday. I got it on my internet up to 10 months. But ideal recommendation should be we must have a booster dose at six months to eight months. Okay. Uh, Aji, I hope that addresses your question. Thank you so much for asking it and, and coming here on uh, on the show today. Uh, Dr. Chopra, a question that suddenly last two three days the media pe attention bhi aaya. We heard of a case uh, where a young gentleman, age of 48, a uh, very well-established and distinguished person um, passed away almost six to eight months after having COVID. Um, and they said that he was majorly into his exercise and heavily into getting back into shape, etc., etc. So, सवाल हमारा ये उठता है कि कोविड होने के कितने समय बाद आप अपने एक्सरसाइज और हेवी एक्टिविटीज रिज्यूम कर सकते हैं and uh, you keep hearing about graded graded manner. What does that actually mean? I think it's a very important question. I know what Mr. Bhartia you're talking of. He was a very really good friend. He was a class fellow of my Samdi, my daughter's father in law. They were together in modern school. Very bright, very intelligent hotelier by Bird's Group. And he grew very well. He did very well, very intelligent. I was talking to somebody from Lodi Hotel yesterday, the GM. And he was also appreciating him. I feel when a person is in post COVID time, he should manage his stress well. He should be more disciplined. Adequate rest, as I mentioned to you, and all these people who are high hoteliers, highly ambitious, they go to late night, they drink, dance, smoke, alcohol. They should not do it. As I told you, one of my patients whose COVID was negative, so he went for a dance meeting. They went all the way to Shimla and he danced till one o'clock. Next day he was there. Very painful. So here it's coming after six months or seven months. The body signal is teaching is even post COVID, you have to be disciplined. I don't say for six months, forever. If you are disciplined for life, life will be good for you <clears throat> because your blood vessels have been touched by the virus. Your clotting system has been touched by the virus. You should preserve the flow and preserve the integrity of your endothelium by a good lifestyle because the stress also has the same negative influence. If you do that, then life will be very good. So I personally, you ask a good question, graded manner is what? When I say you recovered, you don't start doing treadmill after next day or after one week. No, 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 not for three months. Don't go for bulwarking or weightlifting or push-ups. I didn't think you should go for a walk, not for jogging. Jogging, you will get a sudden death. So you have to be very careful what to do. One thing is very important. Sometimes people are a little scared of asking me, but since you asked me a question, one should be very careful about the sex also in the post-COVID time. Because exercise and sexercise are synonymous. They feel complex. They don't feel asked. They feel shamed. It's not a question of shame. It's a sex exercise. It also enhances your pulse rate, enhances your blood pressure. Please seek the opinion of a doctor. If you have a comorbidity, you should be very, very careful. If you don't have a comorbidity, at least take two to three months to recover completely so that your CRP is normal, your D diamonds are normal, and all the inflammatory markers are normal, and radiologically also you are normal. Then one can go for normal activities. But this question should be asked to the doctor, irrespective of whether you are male or you are a female. They are very, very important. And we should not have any kind of uh, uh, feeling that I should not ask this question. They are personal. They are nothing like personal in front of the doctor. You just need to ask and share before you come across any morbidity or unexpected, untimely whatever. I agree with you, Dr. Chopra. No question is silly or small or uh, not warranted. If it's about your life, you need to ask all the right questions. Uh, Dr. Chopra, a small question regarding or hai, before I go to the next caller, uh, is the, that the uh, D-dimer test or anticoagulants clotting, say, um, to remove the clotting or reduce the clotting, etc. 
how much time do you need to take these anticoagulants and uh, would you then consider ki acha wo four five weeks ke baad mein hum ko problem free hai normally the recommendation is worldwide data is 42 days but i say 42 days are those who are covid but those who have comorbidity underlying i'll recommend them for three months this is my recommendation and the recommendation can extend depending on the degree of comorbidity you asked a very pertinent question if despite all these patients dm level is high please extend it so there is no hard and fast rule or cut up point no 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 after what it does no 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 based on the data so it's all variable and i think anti thrombotic dose is also variable duration is also variable depending on the underlying comorbidity and underlying markers if the markers are showing high levels of dimer please continue anticoagulants for a longer time if you are young for a longer time if you are old old or old beyond 80 or 90 so then you should not bleed you can give it for such a uh, period but if you have comorbidities then i think the dose should be decided by the doctor as to how long you should take that's why i say protocol should be followed if you don't get your dimers you don't go to check up for a doctor then how will you know whether you are prothrombotic or not so that's why i'm saying protocol should be followed go for your heart and vascular check up i personally feel there is a tremendous need of heart and vascular profile check after covid which we are going to push it very hard very shortly because especially we learn after the second uh, stormy uh, course of the covid because we lost a lot of young people so this is how we are all learning and protocolizing so that we reduce the morbidity and mortality Thank you so much, Dr. Chopra. We have our last caller, uh, Vikas Gupta, AGM EIL, is standing by to ask his question. Uh, Mr. Gupta, please go ahead. Mr. Vikas Gupta, if you can, yeah, can you hear us? Mr. Vikas Hello? Gupta, AGM EIL. Can you, uh, yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, good afternoon, okay. sir. I'm Vikas Gupta, Assistant General Manager, Engineers India Limited. Uh, uh, I, I ask you a very generic question. A uh, lot of deaths have taken place among our close relatives, among our colleagues, among our fr uh, friends, and uh, all of us, I'm sure, are uh, going through this. In fact, in the morning itself, I attended a shok sabha of my very close relative. Uh, how, how do we cope up with the stress? we as the third party who lost our friends or colleagues and uh, what are the steps we should take because i find we are also coming under stress of somebody going away <clears throat> that's what i think sir we are discussing for last almost 60 minutes and you must have mindfulness meditation a regular exercise protocol and don't get affected by any kind of stress but manage your stress better sleep adequately 6 to 8 hours have a regular exercise take immuno boosters and don't fall victim to any stress take all precautions if i know my own nephew passed away who was 38 year old his two children i give you the example of one of my patients whose daughter in law passed away so we are not victimizing ourselves we should witness all these things it is not your fault so you have to keep yourself in balance that's why i think soma ji very nicely expressed and same way atul ji expressed very nicely that we must have a mindfulness mind mindfulness breathing mindfulness eating pattern mindfulness listening and mindfulness seeing everything if you are mindful everywhere you will be cautious careful and conscious and you will not fall victim to any kind of stress you come across this is just a minor stress there are people who are on the war field what kind of stress they face they get all kind of palpitation because of fear psychosis so they are also taught how to release the epinephrine and not epinephrine proportionately not Unproportionate. So this happens over a period of time. 
and we all have to learn. It is not one day effort. Every day we should keep on doing our regular protocols of exercise and follow yoga and meditation and things will be fine. And uh, just see everything is happening and witness it. And I'm sure very shortly a solution will come and we'll get rid of this problem from this planet. Chopra, we've had an excellent, excellent session with you and uh, I don't know what topic we haven't touched upon. I'm sure individually many, many callers, many, many questions are still uh, uh, pending in people's minds and I'm more than happy. We will be sending out forms. If everybody has more questions, please do send those to us in any format. Send it, send it to Scope and Scope can share it with us uh, and we will have uh, Dr. Chitra answer as many as possible. I'll, I'll, so thank you so much. I'll, I'll just like to give a final message, Vishali. And the message sure, is, we all should know that oxygen is life and life is oxygen. Don't bother about the oxygen when you fall sick to the COVID. Go to the park and inhale the oxygen. And breathing exercise with pranayam is the oxygen inhale. Number two, don't make this pandemic as a panic pandemic, as I mentioned to you. And number three is time to protocolize is now before it is too late. And number four, we must enhance the awareness. Mr. Sophie is here and Madam Soma is also here. Enhance the awareness through the platform of scope and fam health on cytokine storm and clot storm. It is not only cytokine, inflammatory response, but clock stop. We should do it. Some kind of booklet, some kind of pamphlets, some kind of display in digital media should be done. I personally feel that there should be a scope and fam health COVID warrior group. If you create a group like COVID warrior, I'm sure Somaji and uh, Atulji, it will enhance the huge information to the whole world that something started by scope and fam health we must take up this project till we get rid of this virus timely isolation timely hospitalization is the need of the hour we must enhance the awareness unfortunately i saw many patients from many organizations who were not aware of anything so ignorance is no bliss ignorance is no excuse and innocence is also no excuse the next thing which i really wanted is we must understand the concept of blood thinners. There's a lot of confusion. They don't know for how long, which to be taken. We should eliminate this kind of confusion. In fact, I'm going to have a TV program very shortly. I'll request Atulji or uh, Somaji to join me to talk on myth and reality about the blood thinners during COVID and post-COVID time. We must also enhance understanding on severity of COVID. People think COVID may stay at home. No, no. Severity has to be understood. And I was very happy that Atul Sokti praised me a lot in the last uh, video. And this was the best understanding I had. Mild, moderate, severe, critically. I think that's what we all have to understand. If you understand that, then we can save many lives. And third thing is, practice of 3M is a must. This point also I discussed Mr. Sokti and he agreed then we must brand scope and fam health for launching this program of 3M COVID protocol. We must adopt and adapt to the COVID lifestyle in the years to come. We cannot get rid of it. We have to learn to live with it. We have to put on a mask, whether we go to a wedding or a birthday party or any meeting with the Atul Sopti or with Somaji. If I have to meet them, I must put on a mask. I can have a lunch with uh, Atul Sopti, but that time, that is the only time I should take out the mask. Otherwise, I must put on the mask. The mask discipline is a must. And the second thing is, we must appeal to every member of PSU, whether it's Indian Oil or NTPC or SEAL, please extend a helping hand. Provide oxygen generators, oxygen concentrator, awareness, education, knowledge, some kind of portal should be created under the banner of scope and fam health so that anybody can uh, download the information. In the last MSA, we must inform, perform, reform, and transform the whole world, whole universe as COVID free. It is possible 
only if we embark on the 3M protocol enhancement. Not that it should be one-time effort and you forget about it. Then we will not achieve anything. We need to work on it regularly. And I must say my final message is then mindfulness and mask for all is a must. And the second message is meditation, very nicely explained by Somaji also, is a must. And I already discussed with Atul Sopti, very shortly we are going to have the program with a world authority on meditation, whose name is in every uh, book, on every uh, Zoom, or everywhere you see in Deepak Chopra. I'll try my best to get him uh, this program. And last and not the least, mass vaccination program for PSUs and through PSUs for others as a community uh, project. This 3M will be the game changer and get rid of our COVID from the planet soon and produce herd immunity. In the last, ladies and gentlemen, I must just say a few words from the uh, uh, very important uh, Vedic expression before I hand over the mic to Mr. Atul Sopri for his remarks. And these are expressions like this. We are what our deep driving desires are. As is our desire, so is our will. And as is our will, so is our intent. And as is our intent, so is our deed or our karma. And as is our deed or our karma, so is our destiny. We are all the makers of our own destiny. We all have to go through this. Pandemic or endemic or epidemic is a part and parcel of the life. We should not be scared of it. We have only faced many for the last century. We will face this also and this will also disappear. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I'm very grateful to uh, Sopti Sar, Somaji, and each and everyone for giving me this honor and opportunity to be with you. Thank you. Mr. Sopti, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rishali. Uh, Dr. Chopra, I mean, it's always mesmerizing to listen to you. Any of your video, any program interaction with you, whensoever I talk to you or listen to you, always my learning has enhanced multifold and today's session was a riveting great session i have attended so many programs or listened to so many videos but uh, i can say that this is i think many of us will agree somaji will also agree that that this is the, one of the best session we would have ever attended or participated and participants would also share although already i am getting a lot of messages about the program great thank you very much and uh, uh, uh i'm sorry that we have not been able to take many callers and questions because of the time because already time is uh, uh, one o'clock and this is a lunch time i was told 50 callers were already in the pipeline i wanted to join and in addition to that, so many questions. I'm sorry that uh, we are not able to take uh, all the uh, questions as well as the callers. But uh, nevertheless, we'll see that uh, how to address these uh, particular points. What, uh, conclusion has already been, uh, uh, I mean, um, uh, explained by Dr. Chopra. But just three, four points which I can pick up. First message he has given is that vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. So vaccinate is the vaccination is the only remedy whatsoever age group you are not only get vaccinated yourself but to your near and dears also your uh, uh, domestic helps also anybody and everybody we need needs to get vaccinated second point which i could pick up uh, i could pick up is the covid appropriate behavior although we may feel that it has gone down but we need to follow the COVID appropriate behavior, like mask has to be there, social distancing has to be there. We should avoid going to unnecessarily crowded places. And even if we are vaccinated, our, our health developed the antibodies. So this is a very, very important message he has given. 
third message which is a, uh, the most important message is we need to be vigilant and intelligent and uh, we should uh, that's that's very very important and for that protocolization is the most important thing which we need to know also and we need to follow also and we should not uh, 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 i mean we should listen to the expert not follow the uh, whatsapp uh, factory or the opinion makers that that's very important thing and the self medication should be avoided uh, as dr chopra mentioned and trust your doctor that's very important thing trust your doctor and in this regard i would request uh, dr chopra that he can help us in creating the network of the uh, eminent and uh, knowledgeable doctors who can be accessed uh, uh, through video conferencing so that right advice can be given on the right time of course i am sure dr chopra although he is very busy all the time he will always be available to <coughs> guide us and the for the sectoral fraternity in this regard i mean uh, because as he mentioned that the future is going to be only this uh, tele video conferencing i mean going personally will give way for this so dr chopra will bank on uh, uh, you for this thing uh, thanks to you dr chopra for uh, uh, agreeing to our request for approaching uh, 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 dr chopra uh, who will be taking the classes on uh, who will be taking some session on the uh, meditation i mean that will be i'm sure the lakhs and lakhs of people would be looking forward for that i mean if we can organize that program that will be really great and uh, 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 as uh, uh, mentioned by uh, uh, dr chopra so many suggestions have been given uh, by him to us and uh, we, are, we need to we will take this all this uh, uh, all this knowledge which has imparted to us we will take and from the scope uh, uh, i like to assure that the kind of uh, suggestions which you have given to us i'll be discussing with soma ji also and we'll be taking this forward in fact shortly we are going to have a health committee we are we are we will be forming a health committee of experts from the public sector and we will be taking forward and the suggestions which you have given we will we will i mean discuss those also and i'll request all the participants and attendees also to give their ideas to, uh, uh, what more can be done by uh, uh, isco so that uh, we so that we don't restrict only to the uh, what you call public sector but take it to the masses and take it to the society as he used the right word that uh, let us be the warrior in this particular field and let it be let the scope come at the front and your guidance and uh, your support will always be there dr chobra in this regard and uh, fam health uh, definitely uh, i mean it's a great occasion for us to be associated with fam health and uh, program has been very well conducted i am sure that we will have many more uh, partnerships in the future also to take this uh, take this forward last point i like to say that uh, uh, this time will also pass as dr chopra mentioned then the only thing we have to remain united and together so please uh, stay together and stay safe thank you thank you very much vishal what is thanks so much thank you so much mr kopi thank you so much for your kind words uh now uh, next i would like to extend the stage to ms asha kapoor who is the managing director of fam health to give her vote of thanks uh, for the beautiful session organized between fam health and scope uh, asha ji please go ahead ma ji you like to say something <laughs> can't hear so what is your audio man yes uh, i uh, only one point i wanted yeah. to add to the chopra's request for vaccination Uh, all the cpscs are taking active in, active part in the vaccination program of the country and we are vaccinating not only our employees our contractual uh, laborers their families and also anybody who is associated with them so all, uh, the directive has already been given to the cpscs the cpscs are wholeheartedly supporting this uh, action and i think all of us are taking care uh, I, uh, it, we are uh, all organizing the vaccines so i think, uh, I think in a way uh, in we would be more uh, in a more advanced stage of vaccination the country would be sure thank you thank you so much thank you ma'am uh, asha please come on stage and say a few words 
uh, uh, thanks. I it's such a privilege and such an honor. And as a founder and managing director, I can only thank uh, all of you. In fact, we at Panels are so committed to getting accurate information, uh, which is health uh, information. And I cannot thank uh, you enough, Doctor H K Chopra sir, for spending so generously your time on a Sunday. Um, I think. Thank you very much and our deepest appreciation um, to Scope, uh, you know, who even provided a platform at all. Um, Ma'am, uh, Soha Ji, uh, Atul Ji, uh, Director General, you are of course Chairperson, Ma'am of Scope and of SAIL. Uh, I think this has been so fabulous and you know, Mr. Sokte, I must um, uh, point out that one of the things that I've seen uh, over our interaction with Scope over the last one one year or so is the amount of commitment to health, as as I'm sure no doubt other initiatives, but the commitment to health you have displayed. Uh, thank you very much. We should stand shoulder to shoulder along with you. Um, we'd be happy to be your associates uh, all the time. Uh, you know, I'm not going to extend it at uh, this this word of thanks more okay. because it is no doubt. Um, I, this is a good time to talk about uh, and give thanks to uh, Mr. Khan. Mr. Khan is the one who, who has this initiative along with us and his team, who has been so fabulous. Um, uh, thank you, Shubhdatna Ji, Samridhi, Lipi, um, uh, Noshad, Adil, and, and whoever else whose name I may have missed out. Uh, and thank you. All the participants who listened to this uh, webinar, I think this was fantastic. And I took out so much out of this. I was debated all the time. Thank you to all the participants and, and all the sharers. Uh, so, privileged to be here. Thank you for inviting us so much. Uh, and we too, along with you, Spoke, uh, would be honored to take it on all the platforms globally. And, and locally that we're involved with. We do run a TV channel with Tata Sky on health and we will ensure that we get adequate coverage. Thank you so much. That's a pledge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all the stalwarts once again. Thank you for being with us and everyone please stay safe. And we now go up and conclude this session. Thank you very much.